everybody. Uh, thank you very much for being here. As always, appreciate all the coverage. Uh, I know you got a lot of sports to cover right now, so uh, appreciate that very much. And um, thanks for covering our players and our team. So with that, uh, open up for questions. Coach, you talk a lot about connecting with people. What does uh, homecoming do in that kind of uh, environment to try and do that? I think you hit it right on the head. Homecoming is about connecting, right? The past, present, and future. Um, and I think it's a very special time on anybody's campus, uh, especially here at the University of Minnesota, when, where it's the only major Division I football program in the entire state, right? So I think it's very important to get uh, you know, our past back here and mix with our, our present and then obviously set the tone for the future as well. Very important. PJ, you're, you're with the kids, obviously, in winter conditioning, mm -hmm. spring ball, all through this. When and, and what do you say uh, as far as bowl games? When does that come up? What, what do you say? When do you talk to them about it? I don't mention it until you're bowl eligible. Uh, and then you probably mention it for about 10 seconds, then you move on. Uh, it's really, if, if that's going to be our only focus here, that's not why I came. You know, uh, I came for something way bigger. And sometimes you've got to sacrifice things um, to be able to get to those. Sometimes you don't have to sacrifice a lot. It just depends on what presents itself in the first year. Um, you know, it's been 50 years since we've won a Big Ten championship, and, and that's why I came here. And um, there's different avenues of that happening. There's, there's a process and uh, progress to that. And every day, that's all I know how to do is get better than we were the day before. And whatever challenges and whatever opportunities come their way on a daily basis, you attack them and you attack them head on. And that's what I love about this football team. They've never shied away from what we haven't done. Uh, they've just continued to put their head down and get better. Uh, not one person in here has whined or complained about the injuries. Not everybody in that one person in here has whined or complained about the lack of depth. We've just gone. And when it's been your chance, you've taken advantage of it. A guy like Mark Williams is a perfect example. Right? Uh, a guy with, you know, that wasn't even here for the first four months of the tenure. Didn't even practice in training camp, but now he's our starting F. Uh, and played quarterback in high school. So it, it's that transition and that, and that progression as you continue to go. But... Uh, I've, I've never talked about bowl games until you're bowl eligible, and uh, but that's not going to be our main focus here. We're going to do what we have to do to build this and dig this, dig it the right way, our way, I should say. I'm not. That's not saying anything to other people's weren't the right way. I got to be careful with that. Um, I'm just saying our way is the way we do it. That I only know how to do it our way. Did you, uh, refresh me. When you moved Mark to wide receiver, did you see something that you thought might transfer, or what? Processor. Yeah, it was either um, keep him a quarterback, put him at defensive back, or make him a wide out. And uh, where I kind of saw a lot of lack of depth was either DB or wide out. And then when I started watching his uh, characteristics of what he'd be able to do, I thought he'd be suited more for wide receiver in terms of his physical development, um, his twitch, his explosion. Uh, he caught the ball really well. Uh, and I thought that he, had, he brought some size to our unit and, uh, in, in terms of our, our – um, our wide receiver uh, uh, unit. So, um, but that's why I put him there, and I'm glad we did. Uh, and we haven't had a lot of time to work with him, but you watch the speed route he runs. I mean, he's open by seven yards. That's a tough route to get open on, uh, and he runs it perfectly. And Matt Simon deserves a lot of credit for our wide receivers. I mean, Demetrius Douglas, true freshman, is out, hasn't played since the game, third game, right? And then you have Philip Howard, who's a freshman, who's out. And then the next one is Mark Williams. And he goes in there and plays like he's been here a while. So it's a credit to Matt Simon and how he develops those wide receivers very quickly. What's that done for a guy just to learn how to run routes? I mean, it's a progression. Remember, what we do is, you know, one thing that, uh, I, you know, that I, I take a lot of pride in is how we develop wide receivers. Um, you know, we develop them by break points. We do, we, we, uh, there's blocking elements. There's break point elements. Um, there's catching elements. Um, there's release elements. There's all these things that you have to learn. And it takes a while. So, hey, buddy. My man, so, yeah. How, how good are his hands? Uh, they're good. I think he can continue to develop them. Uh, I, I, you know, hands are something that I think you can develop. Uh, we have a very strategic way of developing hands. It's really hand-eye coordination. Catching the football is not just catching the ball. You ever hear, our co hear coaches around the country say, hey, catch the darn ball. That's not called coaching, right? That, that, that's called identifying, right? But the big thing for us is it's where your hands – are going to meet the ball at a certain point, right? So the hand-eye coordination is everything. Developing that hand-eye coordination, um, you know, we have a lot of hockey goalie uh, drills that we do for, for hand-eye coordination. 
Uh, we have over 120 different ball drills that our players can choose from to use uh, in different aspects of where they're at in their development. But I think they can get a lot better, to be honest with you. I think he's, he's shown he can catch it. But again, being in a game and catching him, you know, being your first time playing the position, he's got good hands. But now as he continues to fail, he'll grow. When he succeeds, he'll grow. He'll continue to take all these lessons that he's learning from every game and build on them. Coach, in the second quarter, what, what, can you run through your decision making again on, on the decision to put in Demery in the second quarter? Yeah, uh, you know, as a head football coach, you've got to make decisions uh, as you kind, uh, kind of go forward. We talked as a staff on Friday night uh, about possibly playing Demery at some point to get him some experience. When that would come, we didn't know. Uh, and it wasn't going to come necessarily at a bad situation or a bad time in the game. It just came at the right time where I feel like I had to be able to give him an opportunity to show what he could do. And he comes in and throws an interception. Why is he throwing an interception? He doesn't step up in the pocket. Hand gets hit. Ball floats in the air, and they pick it off. Uh, but he learned from that, came back out, and, and did what he did, right? Um, but again, it was the opportunity. There were so many things that went on. You know, if we don't have Connor Rota the first three games, we don't win the first three games. Um, we're so close, too. And when you have a quarterback who's learning from his failing and growing, but everybody would, doesn't want him to fail to grow, they just want him to succeed and grow, that, that's not realistic. Demery's going to be the same way, you know, if he has the opportunity to play, that he's not going to have, you know, uh, everybody's going to want him to be perfect right now. He's not going to be perfect ever, right? He's going to have to continue to fail and grow. And that's part of playing quarterbacks who haven't played before. And you have to understand that as a head football coach. But, um, you know, we fumble a snap right off the bat. Uh, we go from first and four. And then I think it's second and goal from the nine. Well, next thing you know, that now you got to pass it, you know, and it uh, takes you out of kind of what you want to do inside the five. Then we hand the ball off. We're not supposed to hand the ball off to on that particular play to the speed sweep guy. We do. We fumble. He's not ready for it. Um, we drop a snap, um, you know, and, and we go from, you know, second and five to third and 12. Uh, and then we don't bring a guy across in motion in a three by one. It's a two by two. And, and so I, I just felt like I had to make a decision in terms of, okay, I need to settle Connor down. Um, uh, and then, and then get, while I'm doing that, give Demery an opportunity. And then he went in there and did really well. So I gave him another opportunity. Then he took advantage of that and gave him another opportunity. And, and um, you know, he brought us back. So uh, we got a lot of work to do, though. And one thing I'm proud of this team, they continue to get better. They went out there and got better today as a, as a, as a team. And that's all you can ask of them. What have you seen from Demery and, Demery and Connor this week in practice? Uh, the same thing I, I've seen from them. Competition always with each other, not against. They're continually um, you know, making each other better. And I expect them to do that. You know, as leaders of the football team, that, you know, especially Connor. You know, he's, he's, he's got a ton of reps today. And, and he was very positive and optimistic about what his, school, his, skill, uh, his skill set is. Demery was the same way. Wait, this is a competition with each other. This is an ability to make each other better. Uh, they know that we could possibly continue to keep playing both of them at some point throughout the year. So we both have to, we have, we have to get them both ready. And they, they know that. And they're handling it in a very mature way uh, because I haven't necessarily told them, you know, what we're doing. As far as, as far as holding off on declaring your starter, is it more to keep Illinois guessing or do you really want to see more about how they do it during this, this coming week? Yeah, I, I want to continue to watch him perform, you know, and, and hopefully by tomorrow I'm, 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 I'm narrowing it down closer so we can get the reps more for somebody else. But they did a good job of splitting reps today. And, and um, you know, so that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. Injury situation, uh, situation along the line, and you're shuffling guys. Yep. Does it help to have a quarterback that can make something out of nothing if you have busted plays there? I mean, it helps. You know, it helps. Uh, I think you got to look at. You'd like to have it all, right? You'd love to have a quarterback that could chuck it down the field. You'd love to have the quarterback that can run. That's that's had four years experience. You know, the smart knows the offense, mastered the offense. We've already been here four years. You'd like to have all those things, Chip. But um, you know, it does give an element that's that's different. You know, that you can be able to to create a second play. You know, I mean, you, I, you know, this is not by any mean a comparison. So please do not sit there and say, PJ compared him to this. This is an example of what I mean. You know, Johnny Manziel, when you watched him play at Texas A&M, it was the ability to half of his plays, maybe more than half his plays, were the second play. He got out of the pocket. He created something, right? And those are things that you don't necessarily teach. I mean, that play Demery makes on the sideline where he looks like he's going out of bounds and tippy toes, and that's balance, that's creativeness. Uh, or creativity, and, and, and those are hidden yardage that you don't sit there and say, okay, well, we have to call the ex exact right play on the exact right down and the exact right circumstance of the exact right situation and make it work perfectly to move the ball. Um, and that kind of gives the ability for that to happen. So, um, you know, I was really proud of the progress he made that way. Um, but, again, we've got to con constantly continue to move forward and get better. Coach, when you talked about the six messages from the first six games, mm -hmm. 
did you get any feedback from the players about what they thought of those and kind of what their messages? Or yeah, they said them. Yeah, that, we had a team meeting on Sunday, and what we did was we talked about embracing our past to create our future. After the game, I told them in the locker room, we're drawing a line in the sand. First half of the season's over. Second of the se- half of the season's here. I mean, I mean, this is kind of sarcastic and joking a little bit, but really half the people that played in the first half aren't even playing in the second half of the season, right? Um, so when you start to look, this is a whole new season. And, um, and what I asked them to do was, let's talk about all the things we learned in the first half of the season, from every game specifically. Give me one thing, and we'll all agree on it as a team, one thing from every game that we learned that we can sit there and say we are weathered, right? We're experienced. We've gained as much experience and squeezed all the juice from that orange we possibly can instead of ignoring it and moving on. The Buffalo game, we learned that anybody can beat us. I didn't think we deserved to win that football game. We did, but you know anybody can beat us when we're not at our best. And we found that came all the way down to the wire. Uh, against a Mid-American Conference school who's turned out to be a pretty good football team in that conference. Oregon State, we learned that emotion, right, and focus is critical. That was the most emotion, uh, that was the most emotion I've ever seen this team play with. Practice, scrimmage, game, Oregon State game, that team was emotional, right? Every play, everybody was in it for each other. The offense inspired the defense, defense inspired the offense, special teams connected them. That was a complete game, right? And it was based on the emotion of that football team, that you need that in this game. There's some, like, like there, there's some sports, you don't need that emotion. It's actually looked frowned upon if you have that emotion in certain sports. Football is one you have to have that. Middle Tennessee, uh, we learned adversity and trust. Uh, we had some things happen in our program where I had to make decisions in terms of um, not having people here that didn't do the right thing. So that's if, you, if I can't trust you, uh, then you're going to have to pay a price. And if you can't do the things that the program demands you to do in the right way, then uh, we're going to have some adversity that we're going to have to be able to face. A lot of guys started getting hurt and being done for the year at that point. So we had a lot of adversity thrown our way, and we are aimed up to beat a team 34-3. to So we can even overcome that, right? Uh, the Maryland game, when we get outplayed and outscrapped, right, and somebody does that to us, we're going to get beat. You know, what makes us special and what makes this, this team going to be really good is how hard we play. You know, we have a ton of depth. We don't have a ton of experience. We don't have, a, but we can control how hard we play. And if we lose that, we're gonna get beat. And that's how Maryland beat us, right? Uh, Purdue. We learned how to finish games, and we learned how people finish us. We learned about finish, right? So uh, we we were up seventeen to sixteen with two minutes to go. We finished. No, we didn't. We got finished. And they just smeared it on, smeared it like stepped on it, and just rubbed it into the carpet. Right? And that we got finished. And so we knew what that was like to be that close to finish a game, but then also be finished. That's an experience. And then the, Mich- uh, the, uh, the Michigan State game, belief, the way those players were able to come back, um, you know, from being down the way they were and just continue to fight, scrap, and claw, and uh, not let the circumstance dictate their behavior. There is a lot of belief out there uh, with a lot of people that I-, I can't say shouldn't believe in themselves yet, but with the youth and inexperience they have, they probably don't, but they did, and they showed what they can do. So, I, I made this example with our team. It's kind of like playing two years already within six games. With all of that experience and this roller coaster ride, right, uh, it was a tale of two cities, the best of times and the worst of times, right? What have we learned and how can we apply it? That's as an educator and a teacher of what you have to do as a head football coach. Teach your team's lessons every single minute, every single day. Coach everything. And uh, there's a lot of moments to coach them. So long answer to your question, Andy, but yeah, we definitely covered that. But the players came up with those. How do you harness and, and recreate that energy that you showed at times? Well, I think it's just consistency. You know, uh, sometimes we've made huge strides, and then we lose five or six guys that have made those strides, and then we've got to now catch the other people up. So instead of you're just catching people up, you're not necessarily mastering that position yet uh, and, and developing in that position. You're just getting them caught up uh, because you have a scout team. There's a lot of people that are playing scout team that are now starters for us. So they've missed all those training camp reps. They've missed all those, you know, first half of the season reps because they've been on scout team. You know, we have a scout team issue in terms of numbers right now. But those, that, that's college football. That's the fun of it. You know, if there's, if there's no problems, there's no jobs. Excuse me, Big Ten, giving up about 215 yards a game rushing. Yep. Is it, are teams attacking you where you're vulnerable? Is there a common theme there? Well, I think if you look at last game, most of their run was where? Perimeter runs, right? And, and we're, we're pretty low and, and depleted in the secondary in terms of numbers and experience. So... I mean, I, I, they game planned us exactly the way I would have game planned us for that particular game. And, uh, you know, then we made adjustments to be able to stop that. Then you're softer in the middle. 
right? And then you expose yourself to a play-action passing game at times. So you've got to be able to continue to mix it, mix it up, keep them guessing. Um, but again, I mean, coaches are really smart. Everybody game plans each other. Uh, but a top 20 opponent, there are no moral victories. But, you know, you're an onside kick away from getting the ball back and tying or winning, right? I mean, so we're, the, we're really close uh, with all the challenges and opportunities we've had this year where the kids continue to fight. I'm so proud of their efforts. I'm so proud of how hard they work. I'm so proud of how hard they come to practice, uh, the engagement they have, and uh, the connection that they're having with each other, and, um, you know, the next man up mentality. The team wins uh, three in a row. Does that impact some recruits in the recruiting process? Then you lose three in, three in a row. Does that impact some recruits in the recruiting process? I've always had this philosophy. Even when we were 13-0 and at Western Michigan, this year has nothing to do with next year. Nothing. Last year had nothing to do with this year. Completely different team. And uh, I think recruits see that. And that's the way that I always looked at it as a recruit, that I can't handle I can't control anything that's going on there, but I can control what happens in the future. And I think that excites people. You constantly talk about changing your best and mm -hmm. feel like Thomas Barber is somebody who's kind of exemplified that. Every, yes. Like every single game, he continues to get better. Yeah, I would agree. Um, what, what have you kind of seen out of him? Has he grown in not only on the field or in his leadership qualities, or what have you been seeing out of Thomas? Yeah, the, the challenge we've had is we've kind of force-fed leadership down people's throats this year. Like, listen, I know you, you haven't played much, let alone have you not played much, you haven't led much. Well, here comes a bit, here, here it comes. All of it's going to be jammed right at you. Like, here we go. And that's one thing we've done with Thomas. I think he's handled that really well. I think he's matured very quickly, maybe faster than he's supposed to mature, or wanted to mature, he's had to mature because of the demands of this team need him to be that way. And uh, I think he's learning as he goes. But I think as he grows, you're going to see a very, really, really special player and a special person and a special leader into the future. Council? Yes. You have the third fewest sacks in the Big Ten. How do you manu manufacture more pressure? Well, there, one thing affects another thing, right? Because everybody wants one thing, but then you've got a consequence on the back end. So if we bring more pressure, the secondary that we have, now we're in man coverage. And they're like, well, you already know you have the secondary you have and your injuries. Why would you go man coverage that much, right? So you've got to mix it up, right? You've got to kind of go back and forth. Um, we've got to be able to get pressure with our front four. I think a lot of people have done a great job in quick game, get the ball out. If you see the first four games, our quarterback pressures were higher than they've ever been, right? And quarterback hurries, get the ball out. That's why so many people were doing quick game earlier in the year. Um, and now, you know, people are doing more play action, running the ball a little bit more on the perimeter. So uh, we've got to go back uh, and we've got to make sure we do get pressure on the quarterback, but mix it up. Can't just say we're going to do this the whole game and leave our secondary, um, you know, with no help, right? Especially as we continue to play better and better receivers as we continue to go through the league play. So uh, that's the challenge. It's the balance of having both, um, being able to mix up five man, six man pressures, and still being able to get there with three or four. What's the potential of Justice Harris or Ray Estes playing? Uh, Justice playing, for sure. Um, Ray Estes, I, I, I'm not doing anything yet. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Ray Ray. You're not, you're still a red shirt. Is there any chance of getting the guys who are out, uh, any of those guys who are out for that this week? Uh, you know, what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll give you this, is that, you know, we had some more injuries this past week um, that will affect us this week. Uh, but I'm not going to get into, a, you know, a lot of injuries and probably depth chart probably much longer throughout the entire year, um, you know, because I've got to make some decisions. I've got to be able to um, be creative. If, if, if that's the right word for it. Um, but whoever goes out there has got to do the job, and we'll get them as ready as we possibly can to be, make sure they do that. So one or two more for Coach. Coach, now you've had a chance to watch the film of, of last game. What specifically did you like about Demery's game in the fourth quarter? Well, I, I thought he executed the offense really well, and then I thought he was in really good rhythm. You know, he knew when to get out of the pocket and go, uh, because that's one thing. When you have a running quarterback, or a guy can run, I should say, sometimes you worry he's just going to run. Right? Just get back there and take off. That's not what he did. He got back there, went through his progressions. He did a great job of pocket awareness. I thought he slid in, in, in the pocket really well, uh, except for the first interception he threw. Uh, and we were able to coach him back up on that. Listen, all you got to do is step up in the pocket, and that, that guy's not an issue anymore. Um, and so, again, he's learning. Uh, but I, I liked his pocket awareness, um, his accuracy of the balls he delivered. I thought were really, really accurate and uh, catchable footballs. And uh, I thought he did a really good job with the tempo and running the offense. Uh, in terms of in a very manageable time. And uh, all those other things, if I got through everything else, maybe you wouldn't understand it. Um, but it, that, that's, that's what I thought he did really well. And that's not uh, anything to you. It's just uh, he, those are the things I think he did really well. In terms of specific plays within the play, I thought he did really great things in between there. 
that it might sound like a different language if I talk to you that way. Um, but those are the things I thought I did really well. And really keeping the next play alive, the second play. Yeah, uh, first of all, Levy Smith, I think he's one of the you know, uh, best football coaches that have coached in the game. I mean, Super Bowl coach. Um, you know, he's well-respected in our coaching community. He's doing all the right things at Illinois. He's playing 14, 15 freshmen. And if you see us even next year, that's what we'll look like. Uh, I told you we're going to get younger before we get more experience. That's what next year will look like for us in, in terms of what they have on the roster and how young they really are. Um, but I will say this is that they play incredibly hard. You know, he's doing it with high school players. He's doing it with freshmen. He's letting them fail. He's letting them grow. He's letting them be able to have all those experiences right away. And, you know, they're maybe not getting the win results they want up to this point, but those kids are getting better and better every single week. They're very athletic on defense. They play a lot of people on defense, on offense. Uh, Jeff George uh, uh, Jr. is you know, he's, he's like his dad, but he's got a heck of an arm now. I mean, he can chuck it around the yard. Uh, they've got young receivers who are very athletic. Um, you know, number four had, I think, five catches, 120 yards against Rutgers who went up and over people, made h huge plays, uh, a young guy for them. Um, a very, off very young offensive line, but, but very good, very big. So, you know, they're on their way. It's just those are the growing pains when you take over, you know, that you kind of just say, okay, well, we're going to kind of rebuild this our way, and that's the choice he's made. And, and uh, they're very, very, uh, uh, you know, they're a very tough football team that is learning how to play the game every single week better and better and better. One more, Chip. Uh, mm. Nate Elmer, what, what did you see from him throughout practices that kind of throw him in that? Yeah, well, we, we play a five technique, right? So a lot of times he's matched up in between the tight end and the tackle. And uh, there's times he can be double teamed. There's times where there's a single block with the tight end against him. Uh, Winston is our other five technique. Winston's 240 pounds. Um, Nate Umler is close to 280 pounds. And there's a difference when people start running power and gap schemes with you of washing um, a 240 pound double team with tackle and tight end, washing a 240 40 pound man in and down uh, rather than a 280 pound longer guy. Um, and we saw that he could play early. We saw that he, he has the how. He's got, uh, he's got the strength. He's big enough to be able to do that up front. And so that's why we're playing him as a true freshman, to rotate him in there with Winston and get the most out of him. But he's a kid we had committed to us at Western Michigan. I've known him for close to two years now. Uh, his future is incredibly bright here at Minnesota. I mean, incredibly bright. Uh, he was one that I wish we could have held on to, a red shirt, but we had to be able to play him. See, it depends, right? I mean, he's only 18 years old, right? He's 280 pounds. Uh, I could see him being 290 pounds, moving inside with the athleticism and twitch and length he has. But again, right now, that's where he fits in terms of uh, with what we have and the depth we have. Appreciate it, everybody. Roll the boats. Got your mouth. Go Gophers. Thank you.